Hey guys, this is Thomas from Stylized Station and welcome to our Stylized Stone Material course. In this, I'm going to be showing you how to create a beautiful and very customizable rock smart material using Substance Painter. So let's not waste any time and let's hop right into it. So let's talk about the base layer, probably the most important layer out of all of these, um, out of all these layers. So when you hop into it right away, you can see I've got a few things selected here that are important that I want to go over. So since this is a stone material, one of the most important things for stylized material is the roughness value. Now I typically set the roughness value all the way to one. Um, however, it can typically float anywhere between let's say 0.7 to one. So it really doesn't make a big difference as long as it's in between there, you can kind of tweak it to your liking. The only other thing is metallic obviously has to be set at zero. The metallic value is not necessarily a gradient, it's simply black and white. So if it's a metal, you go all the way to one. If it's not the metal, typically go all the way to zero. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about in this layer is the baked lighting filter, which in my experience, can get you about 70% of the way there for all of your stylized materials. Once you guys start to learn how to use this filter, there is so much you can do with it. It is absolutely incredible. Look at the difference of this, simply using a base color to highlighting it. Suddenly it's almost done, minus adding a few details. So it's super important. So I think I'm gonna do a separate video where I go through every single detail in here, but the most important one is not the material, but the sun sky. So from here, this is where you're going to select the two colors, which are going to be your color different color differences. So again, your material doesn't have to look exactly like mine, but if you want to go ahead and use colors very similar to this, go ahead. This is just the one I ended up liking. So sun color is basically what's going to be coming down on top of the material. So let's cycle through and you can see that like the color starts to subtly subtly change on the top let's keep it somewhere around here for now the ground color is the other one that's going to be making a big difference and that's what's bouncing off of the bottom here so this one you'll notice is much different so as we cycle through that's also another really great color right there you can set it as as you cycle through it starts getting it starts adding color to anything that's going to be bouncing off um, that's pointing down. So you can see this, the eyebrows nice and highlighted, this becomes nice and highlighted, this bottom part becomes nice and highlighted as well. This is a really great effect for stylized art. And let's set this back to somewhere around here. And that looks pretty good to me. Now the sky color and horizon color and the lights are all tiny little tweaks you can start to mess around with to learn and to shake things up a little bit. So the sky color will typically fill the entire object with a, with a color. So if you think, if you thought, okay, well, this looks great, but I need a little more yellow overall in the entire color, you can pop that in like that. But we will leave it at this. And I think I had it set to something like that. Layer number two is the base gradient. And it doesn't make a huge difference in this one, but it's great to have this as a layer. So if you have another model that's slightly different, because not every model is the exact same. Uh, if you have a model that's slightly different or has a large base or has quite a bit going on at the bottom, you can add a nice little gradient, which will add a, another layer of color difference to your asset. Now, typically with the base gradient, I set it as the second layer using an overlay blending mode. Um, if you hop into the black mask, all I have is a basic MG mask editor and the position gradient is set all the way to one. And that's really it. So you can tweak this as you want. And as you go down further down, you can see now it's nice and settled in the bottom. This color, you have everything turned off except for color because you're not messing with anything else. So let's cycle through. and just pick something that works nice. And I honestly do like that yellow, so I can see why I, I can see why I originally stuck with it. So we'll keep it something like that. 
So that's the base gradient, nice and simple. So all it is is um, basic fill. Then you right click, add a black mask, which will pop this in here. And then you're gonna add an MG mask editor. So when this is highlighted, all you have to do is right click, add generator, and then choose MG mask editor. Um, this one right here. And then when that's populated, tweak it a little bit all you want, but the important part is, is the position gradient. Okay. And that's how you do the second layer. So the next layer is the dampening slash curvature layer. So I use this layer to start dialing in the colors a little bit and to pop out the edges. So I will turn it on here and you can see the difference. So you can see based on the curvature map, that a lot of this is now popping out and you're getting some nice highlighting along the edges. So let's break down the material. Now the roughness, I do like to tweak it a little bit. So I turn on the roughness channel and set it to about 0.8 from here. The base color again is totally up to you. I ended up going with this reddish brown orangey kind of color that seems to work right now. You're then gonna right click, add black mask and then you're going to add an MG mask editor. And the only real thing that's important is selecting the curvature and make sure that the invert's off. When it's on, it starts highlighting everything around it and you can see the curvature is not baked. So you switch it, there we go, and that's all you want. Uh, so I just, I just say make sure the curvature is set to one if it lets me pull it. So you can set it anywhere where you're happy with, but typically around here looks good. And then all you have to, the only other thing you have to do is, is make sure you bring in the levels and press invert. And from here, start tweaking them to what you want. I'll leave this open for a second so you can copy these settings. Um, but that's pretty much it for dampening. It adds a nice little, you know, darkens it a little bit, kind of evens the color out in the middle so it's not as contrasty and adds a nice, nice, nice highlight layer as well. Okay, now that we are on the second last layer, it's time to start bringing in some textures to it. So let's start tackling a grunge map. So let's turn this on so you can see what I'm talking about. I've got some nice color variation based on the curvature, some in baked into the ambient occlusion as well. And this adds a nice texture break from the straight up clean material that you have here if I can unselect it. So while this looks pretty good, um, and this does work with certain materials that you wanna keep super clean, typically with rocks and stone, you're gonna to wanna to add quite a bit of texture to it to break it up. So I'm using a single grunge map, grunge map right now. You can add multiple layers and, and add as much as you want, but keep in mind with stylized art, it's all about keeping all the details to a minimal value. So we're gonna stick with one today just for this example. So let's turn it on and I will break this down for you. So as normal, just a normal blend, only color selected. And I, I went with a slightly more red, um, just so it pops out of this clay yellowish red color. Now you're gonna right click, add a black mask, and then in the mask, all we're gonna do is we're gonna add a mask editor. Now make sure global inverter is off and you can start tweaking with this to whatever you're comfortable with but I, I like keeping the balance around here, maybe around 25 to 30%. Um, and I've tweaked these textures to get to the point where I like them. The only other important thing is I pulled ambient occlusion, ambient occlusion and curvature all the way up. Now, the, the main important part is the image input. So with the texture, I, I'm currently using the grunge leak spots, but you can really change this to whatever you want. Um, the only tip, the only advice I would give you is try and stay away from the pure heavy white values and the kind of pure black maps as well. So what I mean by that is say we use this and pop this in, you're going to see that only these little white details are going to really pop out and it's going to make your image look a little naked. Actually, that doesn't look terrible. And then these white ones are really going to come in too heavy. So it's nice to grab something that's um, a bit more of a gray value such as grunge rock like that. And then you can even like, you can even start pulling down, pulling down the values a little bit or whatever you want. 
So it depends on it depends on what you want. I kind of like having it settled in like this. And then if you want to start adding some secondary textures, feel free as well. This just adds another layer of, of detailing, but it's not necessary, right? So we can kind of keep that out or keep it in. It, it, it doesn't matter. So that's the grunge layer. Next, let's move on to shadows. OK, um, shadows or ambient occlusion. This is a super important step. And you can see I just turned it on here. And you can see how big of a difference it makes. This is what it was before which looks pretty good, but with the ambient occlusion popped in, it really just takes it like to the next level, which is what you want to do. So for this one, again, normal blending, only color channel selected. And the base color, I've got a nice dark deep red. You can go all the way black, but since I'm kind, I, I, I'm kind of messing with a lot of red tones, it's cool to have just a bit of a red touch to it. Now you can pull back the, um, the level of it as much as you want. And that looks pretty good to me. So again, there's a few ways to do this. And I will show you two methods. But the one that seemed to work really well for me was just to add a black mask, right click black mask, and then add the MG dirt generator, which actually seemed to work really well. So you just have to make sure that invert is off and then you can tweak it as you like from here with rocks i find that the mg dirt generator works really well because you get this nice little like kind of grungy texture in there instead of just a straight clean line that you may get from another generator speaking of that let me show you it real quick so i can demonstrate another way to do this and something else and something if, if the dirt generator isn't working for you maybe this one will work uh, maybe this maybe this filter or generator will work as well so we're going to right click add generator and we're going to choose the curvature. And you can see it's it's cleaned everything in. Oh wait, not curvature. Where'd it go? Ambient occlusion, my mistake. So let's invert it and you can see, okay, perfect. So add you when you add ambient occlusion, just make sure you invert it because right now it's just taking um, it's, it's kind of doing the outside and it's, it's not doing the, the crevices that we actually want to do. So let's turn on the invert and it doesn't make a huge difference and it's much more subtle, but it looks really good. So you can turn up the balance, um, or turn it down in this case, since, um, since it's inverted and you can turn it down all the way. If you really want it to grab everything like this, get a nice clean value like that. And contrast not really it doesn't look great and that's pretty much it that's a really easy one to do so you can you can bring out the textures and pull them out a little bit and then just simply tweak it as you like so i typically like this one actually looks this doesn't look terrible in my opinion but for this one i do prefer the mg dirt because the mg dirt really seems to just get in the cracks so that is an option for you guys as well so that's it. That's really all it is. Um, you can tweak this material and, and mess around with it to get it the exact way you wanted. Um, let me show you an example. So if you want to change the base color a little bit, if you want to make it a little more blue, you can add in like, these nice blue values and get more of And you can start working with more of a dark gray color. I'll just show you how easy this is. So with the gradient, let's add in darker blue on the bottom baked lighting, we want the top to stay lighter and the bottom to go a little darker. So we can add a bit of a teal light color in here and saturate it a bit because I want to hit the gray values. From here, what looks good? Let's see. Something like that. I, I'm going for more of like a teal gray kind of color. Uh, let's turn off the dampening. That looks pretty good to me, honestly, like this. So we'll leave the dampening off. The grunge map. Let's see what colors, let's see if we can mess around with the color a little bit and get it the way we want. But honestly, this looks pretty good to me. Maybe something around here. Yeah, I like this gray. 
that's in blue, and then tweak, pull it into the blue a little bit. There we go, nice and black. And for the ambient occlusion, this doesn't look terrible in my opinion. But I like that nice purple color there. And you can either re-add the dampening or take it down. It doesn't matter. The The point is this, this material is super customizable and you can tweak it to get it wherever you want. Again, with the grunge, I, I, it, this color is looking a little uniform. So if you want to add some more colors, maybe go to the reds a little bit and pop in some reds and orange, if I can get it the way I want it to go. You know, you can give it a deep, a nice deep red color like this, and then maybe pull it down to a color that's a little more acceptable. My mouse is messed up, just like that. And then there you go, you've got a nice, beautiful, like stone statue, almost like a green marble kind of color. And if you want to add more color variation, you can go into the gradient and throw in something a little more yellow at the bottom. You can mess with the baked lighting because I don't have much color difference here. So with the horizon, let's change it to a bit of an orange. So now we've got some orange tones. And again, the sky I left white, but if you want to add more color, just there we go. And just like that, we have basically the same material, but there's much more color variation now. So this is kind of the idea that I was trying to get across to you that, great, we have a nice little smart material all wrapped up and you just drag and drop it and it's easy to put in, but there's so much more to it and you can't just take a smart material and drag and drop and it's just gonna work perfectly. It, it takes knowledge to actually take that material and tweak it to the way you want it to go. So this is why I'm interested in creating these courses instead of just selling my smart materials. I really wanna show you guys not only how to make the smart materials, but how to tweak them to get them to where exactly you want it to be. So that's it for this course, guys. This was um, actually super fun to make and I ended up with a very cool material like this. I'm very happy with this, to be honest. So um, I've got a lot more of these coming in the future. And um, thank you so much for joining, guys. Uh, I really appreciate it. Again, this is Thomas from Stylized Station, and I'll see you in the next video.